Hello, TubaHero37 here. Today I'd like to talk about some more advanced pool farming information that I've found out since I made my last video, and also show off the Infinite Dash Monk. This is a build that's been around for ages, but I've never put together until this season, and maybe there's some people out there who have never seen it, so you could see how amazing it is for speedrunning anything on like normal difficulty. It's definitely a favorite for completing the campaign in under an hour if you need to do that solo. Uh, it's also a favorite for farming rainbow goblins, particularly with your volume on, because you probably won't be able to see anything around you as you move because it's so fast. All right, I added an extra page to my pool farm document about this, but it's basically the idea that in an area there can't be both a shrine and a pool, which I was a little skeptical of at first, and first let me just uh, go into a zone to kind of show what I'm talking about. So I don't know what's here. But basically, this room down here, all this, I think even up to here, this is all one area or zone or whatever you want to call it. Some people call it a tile. But it's all one general space that can either, and this is where I think uh, people kind of were a little bit off on their rule. I think it can either have a shrine or a pool or neither. So... If you were over here and there's a shrine right here, you don't have to check down here. Um, it's basically like there's no... You're going to check this on your way out the door, but you don't have to go down here and check if you found a shrine here. The same goes for if you found a pool here. So we go into the next area, zone, whatever you want to call it. So these walls here, uh, these see-through walls, they're a good uh, divider of areas. So you can actually have... A pool right here and a pool right here. This is a perfect example, though, of how you can save yourself time with this rule because there's nowhere I want to go after this area and it's got a whole bunch of spawns in it, but I don't have to check them because there's a shrine right here. So just like kind of it's not really going to prove anything because there's always only a low chance of a pool spawning. But the idea is that now there won't be any more shrines. There won't be any more pools of reflection. There's still a healing well. Healing wells do not abide by these rules. There might be other things that abide by these rules, like, I don't know, maybe if there's a goblin, there can't be a shrine or a chest or something. Uh, I've been kind of trying to think of a way so that there's w always something spawned in a zone, but, like, this zone had nothing. There's not a single anything really spawned other than a bunch of breakables and this dead guardsman, I guess, but, yeah. So I don't think any of them have a guarantee of there being something. It's just if you find a shrine or you find a pool, there won't be any more. So I'm just going to go through the rest of this real quick. See if we can find any more examples. So here, if you really want to hit all the zones, you kind of have to get all the way back here. Um, and there were no shrines. There was a pool at the very end. It looks like it's still on this side of this wall. So there could be a pool right there and a pool right over here or a shrine. Um, it looks like this is the next one. And there's a shrine, so there couldn't be a pool down here. So that place that I first found that shrine, that was a place that can actually save you time. Another place that can save you time is Leoric's Manor Courtyard, because if you're not on a wicked fast build, it does take a while to check deep into every one of these corners. So if you go into one and you find a shrine, which I didn't there, didn't there. Ah, here, there's a pool. So this means... It's not going to save me much time because I found it in the third of the four corners, but I don't have to check up there because there's already been a pool, so there won't be another. So that's a way that you can save time uh, with this method. Now, there's some exceptions. For instance, this place, like you can't really tell where it divides, but it's actually two areas. So there's a whole bunch of pool spawn points along this trail. Um, and I've had two shrines or two pools or a shrine and a pool show up on this general area a lot. Um, and I try to take screenshots of them and try and figure out where the dividing line is or anything like that. And long story short, I just always check this full zone rather than try and use that information to save me any time. Before I do that, here's another exception. So I think it's because this is like a special platform of sorts. You can have one there and you can also have one right over here. So I've had a shrine show up there and then I think it's here. Maybe it's over here, but somewhere along this wall, I've had a pool, even though it kind of seems like it should be the same area. So there's another special platform that I'm going to talk about, but that might be an exception to the rule. 
because there's lots of like dividing areas between say lower infernal fate cathedral and now we're in gray hollow in that but it's not quite the same as the fractured fate map where they really tell you what the separation is of the zones so here you can go all the way to the end really quickly uh, with this build and just kind of check all of them but back to the strats okay so at the black canyon if you want to use this strat to your advantage you cannot count this spawn point so this could be a shrine this could be a pool and there's not like this half is a place and this half is another place this is its own zone for some reason or maybe it's tied to a zone back there but it's definitely not tied to anything around here so you can have a pool here and a pool right there somewhere uh, right next to each other on the same spot you can have a shrine here and a pool here so that may be its own zone but this entire area past the bridge is another zone which means if you go right here and there's a shrine or a pool of reflection you don't have to check the rest so I'll go around till I find either a shrine or a pool looking 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 there's a shrine so I'm done if I haven't found one by here a shrine or a pool then I was like, well, shoot, there's so many spawn points. It seems like I should find a shrine or a pool. If I don't find either by here, then I check down here. And it turns out there's a shrine or a, a spawn point right over here. So you can kind of use that to your advantage, like just playing the odds. Like I passed all these spawn points and they had nothing. You'll probably find either a shrine or a pool over here. And I've found a pool there several times since then. So I just added that if I don't find one in the previous zones. So now I'm just going to go through the rest of my pool farm route, but on the monk to show how that goes. And I think I'm going to overlay that with a video of me talking about the build. All right. So the powerhouse of this build is the raiment of a thousand storms four piece. Dashing strike spends 75 spirit, but refunds a charge when it does. It actually doesn't use any charges unless you run out of spirit. So the refund a charge part actually doesn't come up. We only have 300 spirit, which would mean only being able to do four free charges and then being out of spirit. So what we're doing is stacking as much resource cost reduction. We're doing cinder coat and we're doing the fire dash for that reason um, so that it barely uses any spirit and then also stacking as much resource generation as we can. It's also good to have lots of cooldown just for the sake of epiphany epiphany is where we actually even with all the extra resource generation things this is over half of ours like probably three-fourths of our spirit comes from epiphany and then after that point it's mostly just about uh, reducing the drain so the faster your attack speed the more you'll drain it because you'll dash more often theoretically um, I kind of like this amount that I'm at right now um, doesn't look like I have attack speed on either of those. Yeah, so no attack speed on gear. Just the fact that I'm dual wielding 1.4 attacks per second weapons puts it at 1.75. And that's a pretty good amount for me. You could stack even more and theoretically that would make you faster. Uh, Echoing Fury would do that for sure if you wanted to work that into the build. You might notice that I'm using Wong Kim Lao, which isn't doing a thing at all. So I am dual wielding. I'm using resource cost reduction on both weapons, but because I got a fist weapon here and because there's nothing else I really wanted, like Echoing Fury would be a thing, but I'd rather just never lose any spirit. Um, you can put spirit regen on fist weapons. So that's why I picked that specifically. Before that, I was actually, let's see if I saved it. Uh, probably in a monk tab. Yep, I was using a storm shield with cooldown and resource cost reduction. So this actually lowers your attack speed quite a bit because dual wielding gives you a 15% bonus attack speed. You can see that here goes from 25 down to 10. So yeah, this is a little more frequent dashes, but we still are just fine on maintaining. Uh, the gems in them don't matter. I'm using, or this is on normal. Uh, I stacked as much resource cost reduction as I could. That was my priority over cooldown because I'm doing uh, Injiam and Obsidian Ring. And like, I have so much cooldown that it's fine. 58% plus those things, it's going to be up very, Epiphany is going to be up very, very frequently. Um, as far as extra resource, I've got Air Ally with the crudest boots. I've got Blinding Flash, Replenishing Light. At each enemy, you blind restores 10 spirit. I can't imagine ever being able to blind an enemy because my movement skill 
is DPS. So like a small area of effect gets attacked and it's normal. So they're probably dead as well. But using Blinding Flash recovers an additional uh, 125 to 165 spirit with this uh, spirit stone, which guess what? Another source of spirit regen. <laughs> so I actually have three from there, four passively here, 2.22 um, here. So we've got a little bit of extra spirit regen that you might not have. Mantra, mantra of healing, uh, circular breathing gives you another three. I'm assuming this works even if you don't actually have it activated, but maybe not. I don't know. There's not really anything good to put in its place anyway, but this is what people were using when I just kind of looked up builds on this. They were all older versions of builds, but I assume it would work just as well as it did then. Um, so maybe they were intending to spam that, and that would be to keep Pride's Fall up. <clears throat> I don't do that. I just go with uh, Molten Wildebeest Gizzard. So as long as the shield is unbroken, I will always have 30% resource cost reduction. So if we look at our resource cost reduction, 71.58. That's before the 30%, or in this case, 29 is factored in. So it's actually closer to like 80%. So if we have 80% of 75 spirit removed, that means that we're only spending 15 spirit every time we dash. So that's a lot easier to maintain with our spirit per second, especially with the 45 from Epiphany. It never drops. So I don't even have to activate my Blinding Flash. I don't have to activate my Mystic Ally, Air Ally. But you could, if, especially if you don't have all these extra gens or if you're missing some resource cost reduction. Like, I don't have any on this ring. I don't have any on this amulet. You could, um, but you might have even less than I have. All right, lastly, I'm going to talk about the kind of useless things that I have in the build just because I don't really, I can't really think of anything better to put in their place. So, like, anything movement speed wise is probably a waste entirely. So, like, Rachel's Ring, yay, I might occasionally get a burst of movement speed, but I am literally just holding Dashing Strike down the whole time. So, I'm never actually moving. So, I don't think that that's going to help me out. Same with Wreath of Lightning. I just don't have any other gem that I'd want to put there. It would be the same if I put Boon to the Hoarder there. That's just more movement speed. I think I already mentioned Wan Kim Lao. This isn't doing me any good other than being a fist weapon. You know, if you have some idea that involves something else to min-max this build, you could do that. And then lastly, uh, my left click has just been kind of a floating skill, whatever I want to put there. Uh, all the builds I looked up had this as Sweeping Wind, Inner Storm for the extra spirit regen, and they also predated Captain Crimson's or else chose not to use Captain Crimson's. So you would be wearing Kairoshiro's belt uh, so that you just always have Sweeping Wind up. You'd never have to manual cast it after the first time. I feel like if I were to put it on the bar right now, I'd be casting it between zones using spirit I don't need to use to just have a little bit of bonus spirit coming back. So I figure I'm not even going to bother with it. So at first I was going with uh, just this has a little teleport to it and it would give me more spirit if I really needed it quick. Um, at some point I got it in my head that the Injom actually helps speed you up quite a bit. I don't know now that that's a thing. But at that point I was like, let's just make it so that if I left click, I blow up everything near me. So I just threw explosive light on. But I can't think of a, any better or any good sixth skill. There's things that increase your movement speed, like the Zephyr, I think it's called. But I really like the build just the way it is right now. So you could put something there pretty much wherever you want. I just go with Explosive Light. Okay, lastly, lastly, uh, using this build without the fourth cube slot, right now I'm using it for Crudus Boots. Every guide I looked up didn't have Captain Crimson's in it. It had the belt and uh, Crudus Boots here. So you could do that. It would work very well, I'm sure. But I feel like since so much of my spirit gen comes from Epiphany anyway, I'd rather just have the CDR and RCR here, focus around that, and drop the crudest boots. So with my pretty well optimized stuff, like I said, no RCR here or here, but you could because you don't need to deal damage. Um, let's just throw on a useless necklace, Flavor of Time, and go run around uh, like the battlefields of Eternity somewhere big. So... This is me with no crudest boots, just a one single air ally uh, and epiphany up. And let's see how the spirit holds up. Seems to be doing just fine. So if it ever does run out, then I can just hit uh, blinding flash, 
or air ally and that will restore it like it'll give me like two thirds of a bar uh for one actually it's like half a bar for the blinding flash and a third of a bar for the other one so right now we'll try one of those bam and if i get an ingeom that thing will just go right back to full so looks very very non-season viable with the captain crimsons but you could also just do the crudest boots and kairoshiro's belt if you want I'm just kind of running around doing nothing right now. Blinding Flash is back to full. I also forgot Squirt's Necklace isn't doing anything useful for the build. So that's another flex slot. Okay, so I think I said last thing like four times already in this video, but as I was editing it, I remembered I forgot to include the screenshots that I've taken of exceptions to the rule. So I only have one of the Lower Infernal Fate, but I think I've had this happen a few times. I, it just was always the same scenario, so I didn't take more screenshots. But basically, uh, right by the spawn point, there is, or by the waypoint, there is a spawn point. And very close to that, I found a pool of reflection. So either this zone ends there or that platform that the shrine spawns on is special. All right, so in Black Canyon Mines, I mentioned that this platform over here does not represent this area. So if you find a shrine there, it doesn't mean that there's no pool left. Same if you find a pool there, there could still be a pool. And this is one of those examples. I found a shrine there, searched the zone until I found a pool, and then I stopped. Another example, found a shrine there, searched the zone until I found a pool, and I stopped. Uh, shrine in a pool again. Shrine was there, pool up here. Okay, this time there was a pool on that platform, and I kept searching the zone until I found a shrine or a pool, and I happened to find a shrine, so I stopped then. Shrine on the platform, pool not. Shrine on the platform, pool not. All right, so in Leoric's Hunting Grounds, this area, I believe, is two pool spawn, uh, two potential spawn locations, but I'm not sure where the divide is. So you'd think it'd either be horizontally, where there can be one up here and one down here, or vertically, where there can be stuff on this left side and more stuff on this right side. Right now, it looks like it would be like a vertical divide because I had a pool of reflection here as well as there, even though you can't tell that, you know, that could have been a health well that I clicked, right? But no, I don't click health wells, and I wouldn't have taken a screenshot if I had just found two health or a health well in a pool of reflection. So yeah, those were two pool of reflections in the hunting grounds. Here's another one with two shrines, one on the top there and one on the bottom here. Here's one with two shrines. Uh, here's a close-up <laughs> of a shrine very close to a pool, uh, so like, where is the dividing line? If those can be two different zones, it's hard to tell because you would think, well, maybe just this one's unique, except these earlier one, like this one kind of debunks that unless there's actually three areas. Um, here's another one where they're both on the bottom right corner, basically a shrine and a pool. Uh, another one with them both on the bottom, a shrine and a pool. Here's one where <laughs> they're kind of right next to each other again, shrine down here, pull up there and upper okay so this was the pool of reflection i didn't click the health well so yeah there are just lots of different places that there can be both a shrine and a pool or two pools on this area that was all the screenshots so this is why i just always check the soul zone maybe someday i'll find three and then I'll realize, oh, there were actually three zones or one special platform type situation and two zones. But for now, I've only seen a max of two, like a pool and a shrine or a shrine and a shrine, etc. Um, so, yeah, I think that's two zones. I just have no idea where the two zones divide. I didn't even know you could skip that. It won't let me skip back. That's freaky. Hang on. So you go up here. How did I do that? Whoa, <laughs> did it again. Okay. Dude, somebody needs to tell Garfim about this. It might be able to save a monk some time on new game. <laughs> 